hey what's good we're back voice memo for later episode number 26 um yeah i i know the episode number this time now i have my uh my dashboard pulled up on anchor well now it's podcasters.spotify.com i'm not really sure what's going on they've changed a bunch of stuff since i was last on that's how long i've been gone they've been changed they've been shaking stuff up um march 7th i'm just looking at it right now march 7th of 2023 more than a month ago was my last episode um and to those that are listening if anyone um i i owe you an explanation that that's a long time to to like skip out on podcasts it's like several weeks worth of episodes which which so mean several episodes because it's once a week um yeah i gotta be honest i just I lost a little motivation for a moment, um, coupled with had a bat in my house. That was really fun. Um, so it was kind of, you know, I, I was over at my parents' house for actually a couple of weeks, uh, until that was like completely done being like dealt with. Um, my house is bat free now. There's no bats. Uh, everything's cleaned up in my attic. We're, we're good. Um, got the rabies vaccination shots as a precaution. Uh, no to anyone who's asking, did you get bit? No, as far as I know, no, I did not. But that's the thing. You know what? We're going to, we're going to educate you here for a second. Okay. Bear with me. Um, I learned going through this experience that many people do not understand a damn thing about bats or rabies. So let me try to explain my limited knowledge from a, a, you know, just a, an average Joe who went through the experience and did a little research and got informed um, by experts. And now I do understand it um, to some degree, enough to explain to another person, to educate a fellow human being, okay? Bats can bite you and you wouldn't feel it, all right? If you're sleeping, there's a bat in your room, it could bite you. They have like really tiny fangs or whatever. So you wouldn't even necessarily feel it's like little pinpricks. Um, You wouldn't notice, especially if you're sleeping, right? Obviously, right? If you're awake, you probably notice that there's a bat on you, I would imagine. (laughs) But if you're if you're dead ass asleep, right? uh, You you know, it might feel like something, you know, the the light touch of a bat landing on you for a second and, and nibbling you. You know, I mean, it might just feel like, a, I don't know, just a bug or something. I don't know. It it could happen, I guess, is what I'm saying. It ha- and actually, to be fair, it has happened for sure. Um, there are cases where people were bit while they were sleeping and they didn't know. So just in case you didn't believe me, um, it has happened for sure before. But point being, in addition to that, if you are, you know, saying, well, Zach... Aren't you going to notice the bite mark on you? Okay, well, remember, point one, their fangs being small and all that. Um, You can actually get a bite and not see a mark. That's the other thing, right? It's, it's, they're, they're actually that small that you would A, not feel it, and B, not even see the mark. Now, you might feel it and you might see the mark, right? This isn't a guarantee like this is what will happen. It's just that could happen, right? Now, why do we care that that would happen? Why do we care if like, oh, a bat might bite us and we wouldn't notice? Well, that is because of rabies. And uh, so I think, I okay, I'm going to explain what I viewed rabies as before, right? Before I got educated on this, um, my reaction, like what I think about when I think of rabies, and I think this is probably a lot of people, it's, oh, it's like that weird thing that like it kills those poor animals you know they get they get rabies they foam at the mouth and then they die right and they they and then what and if you see a foaming mouth you know raccoon or whatever or or it's or it's behaving weird it's walking around in the daytime it looks drunk or whatever it might have rabies it probably does have rabies and you should probably just stay away from it right okay sure now that is while all of that might be more or less true bats also carry rabies right and while it is not at a high percentage right it's it's very uncommon for any one given bat to have rabies right this is a small number of bats that have rabies but it's not zero right there are definitely there is a chance that a bat can have rabies 
And then when it bites you, it could give you rabies. Now, if you get rabies, here's why we care, right? Zach, why do we care if it bit us and we didn't know? Okay, this isn't like a foaming mouth raccoon that you can just like stay away from, right? A bat, as I've already explained, could be in your house without you knowing it. I Hell, a bat was in my house and I had no idea. Probably, as far as I saw from the attic, the, the shit it left everywhere. By the way, also, bat shit is called guano. Um, <laughs> what? What kind of bullshit is that? Sorry, what kind of guano is that? Some bat shit there. Um, that their shit has a name? I'm sorry, but that is just... That is pretentious as fuck. I don't, I don't know what kind of bat lover decided, like, you know what? We have to call it guano. Like, fuck you, dude. Anyway, oh, that's another thing I learned in this whole experience is people care way more about how the bat's doing than how you're doing when you go through this like you talk to like the dnr i mean i you know i guess i should figure it's the dnr you know they're just like the only thing they'll tell you is like oh well you know do you uh do you need help getting it out and they'll like explain how to properly like safely capture a bat not safe for you safe for the bat they're like that's their number one concern is right like making sure the bat the bat's health is the number one priority. Make sure the bat's okay and it gets released properly into the wild. It's like, okay. Um, oh, and I guess I should mention here, if you're going to take my side and be like, yeah, fuck bats. Uh, don't kill them, though, because they are endangered and that's, like, illegal and you can actually get into trouble. I actually had a coworker that I was telling about this whole situation and he was like, yeah, I actually know somebody who, like, I don't know if they killed a bat or they injured it a lot or they, they hurt a bat and they were like posting about it on Facebook and then they got fined. So don't, don't do that. Um, and by the way, I did not do that. I, um, okay. We're going to come back to the original thread here in a second, but I like was a bitch boy. Okay. I could not handle it. That's something I learned about myself in this experience is like, I don't do for lack of a better word, I'm just going to say critters, okay? And when I say critters, I mean, like, unconventional animals. Unconventional meaning, like, this is not an animal you would expect to normally have as a pet, right? This is like a wild animal. Like, I don't deal with critters, okay? If there's a, an animal in my house, a wild animal, I run for the hills and I call for backup. And someone else comes in. Backup, in this case, was my parents and ultimately my dad, and he came over and with, with the help of my dog, who has a good sense of smell, obviously, um, they, they found the bat and, uh, they, and he trapped it in like a container, poked holes in it so it could breathe and whatever. And then actually it just stayed in my sunroom for a while while we went out to sleep at my parents' place. We were going to sleep in there because we didn't know if that was the only bat, right? For all we know, there could be more. It's like, we can't sleep in our house if there might be bats, um, and then, yeah, he ended up, like, uh, releasing it into the wild. Uh, the I think it was the next day, maybe. Yeah, it was the next day. So, yes, I didn't. nobody did anything illegal. So if you're a cop or something, listen to this. I like how I assume, like, a cop would listen to this and be like, that's illegal. He hit a bat, which I did not do, by the way. But he hit a bat with a bat. How ironic. I'm, I don't know what, writing him up. I'm going to write a report like like an average just police officer. Like a local cop is going to give a shit about, like, they're, they're probably going to be like, yeah, that was the right move. No, just kidding. They'll probably be like, that's illegal, you know. But they're probably not going to do anything. I don't know who does do it. Maybe the DNR is who would do that. I'm not really sure. I have no idea how this other person got in trouble, like fo posting on Facebook. Well, obviously, I know how they got in trouble. They posted on Facebook so everyone could fucking see it. What a dumb fucking thing to do. But I, I just mean, I don't know which party was responsible for, quote, you know, getting her into trouble. Like, you know, d d starting the action that led to her getting fined or whatever, you know. Um, But yeah, I, I cannot do critters. I, I just grabbed my, my dog. Goes, I'll say I'll set the scene for you. This is the, and I was having a perfect night too, dude. That was the that was like the biggest bummer. Is like I was actually having a nice night. Like I was playing a game. If you hear by the way a cat screaming in the background, that's my cat being annoying as fuck cuz he always does that. Actually, you know what? Um hold for just one second. I'm going to pause this real quick and I'm going to take him out of the room cuz he's going to he's going to bother me the whole time. Okay, and we're back. He is locked out of the room. I have to do that a lot. He's uh, 
He's an old cranky cat. He gets cranky easily. I like how I say he's an old cranky cat as though that's the reason. It's because he's old. Like, no, he's always been cranky. He was young and cranky before, and now he's old and cranky. Um, but no, I'm, I'm having this great night, right? I'm playing uh, um, Core Keeper, actually. Oh, shout out Core Keeper. It's a pretty fun game. I'm playing Core Keeper um, you know, with, with my brother and my dad. And we're, you know, on Discord and we're playing and we're having a fun time. And now my dog is scratching at the door. God damn it. Hold on one more time. Hey, and we're back again. Um, yeah, you totally noticed the bo- the pause too. Uh, because this is just going to be like a, hey, I'll be back. I'm back. Because I don't have, um, I don't have ads. I don't do ad reads. Those would be, that might have been a good time for an ad read if I did ad reads, but, uh, you know, I could do an ad read. Oh man, I get so distracted so easily. Okay. We're gonna, okay. You know what? <laughs> we're, we're gonna do an ad. Okay. We're gonna do an ad read. Um, let, let me be clear. I'm not sponsored by anybody. So this ad read is for, for free. Just, just, you know, oh, you know what? We'll do an ad read for, uh, yo-yo factory. Okay. I got into yo-yos recently because I needed another hobby. Um, and so I got, yeah, I have this yo-yo. It's the shutter. I bought it off of Gentry Stein's website. It's by Yo-Yo Factory. Uh, Gentry Stein is a, a world champion yo-yoer. The shutter is a, it's a metal yo-yo. It's a, it's a professional. Yeah, okay. I'm going to explain really quickly so that this ad read works. Uh, what? I'm going to explain what modern yo-yoing is like, okay? Like cuz it you, so yo-yos used to everyone knows what a yo-yo is, right? Okay. You you remember like the old Duncan yo-yos and stuff, they're like very narrow, small, um made of either like wood or plastic and you just, you know, you throw it down, it comes back to you, and then if you, th- you know, first, you know, a lot of them you could throw them harder and they would sleep, right? They would spin at the bottom and whatever and all this stuff. Um, that's what yo-yos used to be like. And then somewhere probably in the early 2000s, I'm going to guess, because I know like in the, the 90s for sure, this was like still the thing. Um, the, the They ran into a problem, right? Because like in order to do fancier and fancier tricks with a yo-yo, you need it to sleep for longer, right? You need to put it to sleep so that you can manipulate the string and the yo-yo and do like fancy tricks, right? Well, um, this was really hard to do with those yo-yos, which we would now call those are responsive yo-yos, as in they respond, right? They they come back up. The type of bearing that they use means that they spin, um, but not for a super long time. And then you pull, you know, you pull with your hand, and it comes back. It responds to that that motion. And if you or you can just throw it down less hard, right? And a lot of them they would just automatically come back up, right? Um, because they're responsive that's the way that the hardware is meant to work they needed them to sleep longer to do these fancy tricks right so they started like modifying the yo-yos and like um like loosening them and doing different things like sanding stuff down whatever i don't know what all they did but they tried some different stuff and eventually the solution was to make a yo-yo that's unresponsive so now pro pro yo-yoers pro yo-yo um, they use unresponsive yo-yos now, uh, and that's basically a type of yo. It's what it sounds like. Instead of being responsive and coming back up, it does not come back up. Basically, right? You you throw you throw it down. It's sleeping, and then you can like jerk your hand till the sun goes down and comes back up again. That thing's never gonna come back up. Now I know you're thinking now, Zach, that's not a yo-yo anymore. Because then how do you get it to come? You have to get it to come back to your hand it's for it to be a yo-yo. You can't, uh, otherwise that's something else. I don't know what that is, but it's not a yo-yo. Well, the key is doing a technique, a, a little utility move called a bind. And there's all sorts of ways to do it, but it's essentially a type of way where depending on the direction the yo-yo is spinning, you wrap the string around it a certain way and you time it just right that you basically are like adding string to the bearing to make it, it's going to add friction which then basically makes the unresponsive yo-yo start to have some responsiveness, right? It beca- You kind of are turning it, you're making it respond to you manually. It's, you just have to return it to your hand manually by doing this bind technique, right? And then it comes right back up. Uh, so anyway, 
this allows it to sleep for much longer because it doesn't respond so it's like it spins faster and for longer and then also um because it doesn't respond to like a jerk of a hand right that means you can do a lot more crazy stuff and move it a lot crazier and not worry about like it accidentally coming back too early and getting tangled and whatever. Now you can still, I mean, I've, I can't even count already the amount of times I've picked a knot out of that thing. Cause I'm a beginner and I'm still learning stuff, but this is all to say, this is the worst ad read of all time. <laughs> I just like, this is not an ad read. This is a lecture on this is the history of yo-yos. I don't know. And it's it's not a good that either because I've not explained any of the history of yo-yos other than explaining that there's a such thing as a responsive and an unresponsive yo-yo. Anywho, um, the Shutter by Yo-Yo Factory. It's a great beginner yo-yo. I've had no issues so far um, to speak of, really. Um, the thing... Pff, yeah, it spins, man. It's it's certainly the best yo-yo I've ever had. Not that the bar is high for that, but um, it's been fun learning different beginner tricks like trapeze. Um, and I'm trying to learn double or nothing, and that's proving to be kind of difficult. Um, I've done a... Well, I guess I don't know if I've done a laceration or there's like different variations of a laceration that apparently aren't really pure lacerations. They're like beginner versions I don't really know. I did something kind of like what resembles the last region. Basically, you whip, the, you you jerk the yo-yo up after it's sleeping. Uh, well, after you throw a breakaway throw. A breakaway throw is where, because you can throw the yo-yo down in front of you, right? But then you might have seen yo-yoers, they throw it to the side. So it's like the side, it's facing sideways, right? And so it moves horizontally and they do fancy. That's like kind of the, that's where the real fun in yo-yoing is, is doing those breakaway throws. Um, because there's a lot more like interesting stuff you can do. But, um... Yeah, lacerations where you throw that breakaway throw, it's sleeping, and then instead of like manually going up into a trapeze where you like swing it, it loops over your offhand finger and then it like lands on the string, instead of, that's what a trapeze is, instead of doing that, you kind of get into sort of a trapeze type position from just like jerking it up and whipping the string around and it creates a loop and then you just like put your other finger into the loop and catch the yo-yo on the string. Um, that's pretty fun. That one's a little bit tricky, but I've been able to get it. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even know what else to say. I don't have a lot of experience. This is why this is such a terrible ad read is because I can't even, I don't know. From a beginner's perspective, um, it seems to be a pretty nice yo-yo. Uh, you know, it's metal, feels, it feels, it's lightweight, but it feels like it's, you know, has some durability to it. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice it's it's uh it's it's learning the bind that was my biggest concern because i've never used an unresponsive yo-yo before so i was like i don't know how long it's going to take me to even because if you can't do a bind right you can't get the yo-yo to come back which means there's no point in learning anything else right you can't until you can actually get the yo-yo to 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 come back it's like you, you need to do that so I, I thought i might be stuck on the bind for a while but actually ended up being pretty easy to learn i still kind of suck at them sometimes they're kind of i i mess them up a little bit sometimes but uh yeah it's a nice yo-yo and it's at a, an affordable price I, I think it was like 30 something dollars or maybe 40 um yo-yos can get expensive by the way yo-yos can be like hundreds of dollars literally like some of these like really good yo-yos are like literally like 200 dollars. i mean it's kind of nuts so the fact that this is like oh and i should shout out that gentry stein this the the world champion yo-yo i mentioned who this is like his yo-yo uh one of his yo-yo kind of models um, he actually won, I think his, I want to say, I think he won his first world championship or maybe the national championship. He's, I think he won worlds as well, uh, with this particular yo-yo. So, I mean, yeah, for 30 to $40, you can get like a yo-yo that is, I mean, in the right hands. I mean, it's capable of winning a world championship. You know, it's, it's a, it's definitely not a bad yo-yo. It's a good yo-yo by anyone's standards. So yeah, excited to to keep playing with that thing. Go to go to the the Yo-Yo Factory website. Do they have their own website? Do, I don't even know. I got it off of Gentry Stein's website. Okay, I'm just gonna shout out GentrySteinCom. That's G E N T R Y S T E I N dot com. GentrySteinCom. You can go. That he's got a shop on the website right there, and you go in there and you can get all all the stuff. You know. He's got a yo-yo master pack that comes with like a few different types of yo-yos um, to sort of like level up and kind of, 
you know, it's it's supposed to it's supposed to kind of help the beginner kind of progress from like lower level skills to higher level stuff and and whatever. It comes with like a it's a spin star yo-yo, which is like a basic responsive yo-yo. And then there's a yo-yo factory one yo-yo. And that's the uh it has like a, a better like ball bearing upgrade to it so it can it's still a responsive yo-yo but it sleeps for much longer than like your average responsive yo-yo would would and then it's got a replay pro which is an unresponsive yo-yo and oh and it notes there this yo-yo was used by gentry to win the u.s national yo-yo contest i don't know which year but cool and it's got five pack of strings actually i need to get some strings at some point it's a good thing strings are pretty cheap actually you can get um on this site here you can get a uh, a 100 pack and that i think is like 15 bucks yeah like 15.99 for a hundred strings now granted you'll go through them because and that's why i need to get them apparently you're supposed to change your yo-yo string like at least once every like few days or so now this is probably depends a lot on how much you play it obviously right um so for me i probably could like get a week out of a string at least or maybe even more but uh yeah you're supposed to definitely like pretty regularly change the string so i've just still got the default string this came with and i'm you know it's definitely i'm starting to notice it's getting a little frayed and stuff i i think from what i understand it is definitely showing some signs of wear to the point where it's like yeah it probably should be replaced not because it's gonna break or anything but it's just gonna it's it's harder to play with it gets tangled easier it um it can sometimes create friction where you don't want it where you might you know the the, and the same thing with you need to clean the the bearing and and kind of lube that up a little bit every so often um because if you don't do these things sometimes your unresponsive yo-yo can actually like respond at awkward times and stuff and kind of you know get a little too much friction going it's not going to sleep as well it's going to respond when you don't want it to it's you know you, you got to maintain it so yo-yo factory gentrystein.com um put in the code no i'm just kidding i don't have a code because i'm not sponsored but um it's a cool cool guy and a cool company and i like it all right back to the podcast which never went anywhere i'm back everybody god this is so dumb <laughs> this episode so dumb okay so anyway i was having this great night right this is back to the bat story um playing uh core keeper with my dad and my brother having fun drinking some wine just just relaxing, just having a nice night, you know? And all of a sudden, I hear some sort of sounds, you know, the, the telltale sign that, like, my wife is trying to get my attention by, like, yelling for me because I have my headphones on so I can't hear her very well. So she's, like, has to raise her voice so I can hear her. Um, so I pull my headphones off. And sure enough, yeah, she's calling for me. And she sounds frantic. And I'm like, oh, no, what is going on? And I thought, and she's like yelling at Clara. We're not really yelling, yelling, but she's like, Clara, no, Clara, stay back, stay back. I'm like, oh, God, what is happening? What is the dog doing? I go up there and she's just like, I don't even know if she said anything else. She just like, get, get the dog. And she's pointing. And I see my dog and I have a, um, I don't know if I've said before on the podcast. And if I did, you probably wouldn't remember I have a small dog. I have a beagle ear. It's a beagle cavalier mix. Um, she is, you know, she's got that hound nose. So and she's very, so she, nothing's going to get by her, right? Well, she's, I see her and she's doing this thing she does. This is probably a, a typical kind of dog thing. You, if you have a dog, you've maybe seen your dog do this. She's like curiously sniffing, but she's like, a little on edge right because she doesn't know what she's sniffing and she's kind of weirded out so she's like leaning really far forward and like sniffing and then she'll like jerk her head back and lean forward and sniff and then jerk back and i look and i just see a thing on the ground and i in the moment i only know two things a this is a living creature and b i don't know what the fuck it is and then c I need to leave <laughs> just in that order <laughs> living creature unknown danger I need to leave and I just grabbed the dog carefully who was by the way close enough to make out with the thing I mean she's right by it, and the thing's just frozen it's just sitting there as still as anything could ever be I grab her 
I'm like, okay, let's let's go. <laughs> and uh, my wife <laughs> gladly follows. And we go outside. And then we're like, I don't... And I think... I don't know who said bat first. But I, I thought... Um, that it was either a bat or a toad. Don't ask me why. I know what you're thinking. But Zach, bats and toads don't look anything like each other. You know what? That's probably a pretty fair point. But when you're facing an unknown critter on the ground and you're a bitch boy like me, your brain tends to, you know, shut off. You freeze up and you get really dumb because you're just scared out of your wits irrationally. <laughs> so I was just like... Uh, and I thought I think the only thing I reason I thought bat or toad is because it just had a generally triangular shape. Does that make sense? Like if you see like a toad, like the head kind of looks like really wide and big, right? And then as you go back towards its hind legs, it gets not a lot skinnier, but it gets a little more narrow. So from a certain angle, you could almost imagine that the general shape, right? If you're going to like sketch it out, if you're like an artist sketching a, a drawing out on the paper and you're st- you're just starting the sketch lines of it, right? You're just getting the overall shape to start adding to, to just before you can even add any kind of other minor shapes or details or whatever to build it out. You're just getting that general shape, right? That's how, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody draw something, right? Who's like a professional artist, but like they, they, when they, start out it's just general shapes right so like a, a a person like a portrait drawing of a person would start off as like some sort of like big oval they would just draw this big oval and then they'd like maybe they'd draw like little curved lines for the shoulders and the neck and whatever they, they'd start connecting stuff and it'd just be general shapes that looks almost like nothing it doesn't look like a person at all yet and then they start adding other smaller shapes like for the ears they have other little ovals and then same with the eyes. Those are different ovals that are in a different shape. And it's, it's slowly, one by one, right, it starts to come together. Then they start adding details. And then finally, later on in the drawing, they're shading it to add the lighting and everything. And then finally, in the end, it looks like a really amazing drawing of a person. And it looks real, right? So if someone was going to sketch out a toad or a bat... In either case, you might all you could imagine, right, that they might start with like a triangular looking shape. They might they might literally just draw a triangle to start, right? And they would start and then eventually they might erase parts of that too, right? And as they are adding details and, and really fleshing it out. So I don't know. I that's my excuse, is they both have a generally triangular shape from a certain angle if you look at it a certain way. And again, my brain was stupid, so I couldn't think straight. Um, turned out to be right on one of those guesses. It was a bat. Um, I, I, yeah, but I said bat or toad. And you know what? Secretly inside of my head, I was hoping for toad, right? Obviously, because a toad's much a, that's a much simpler problem, probably. Unless, I don't know, has anyone ever had like a toad infestation in their house? That sounds crazy. Maybe it's happened. I don't know. Maybe like in a swampy area though, um, which I do not live in, so yeah so i we laughed we called you know like i already said my dad came and trapped it and, and yeah we were at my parents place for a couple weeks um it was kind of fun actually uh being well, i mean the reason for being there sucked um it felt terrible to like have my own home that i now felt like i couldn't live in and i couldn't feel safe in right and now we were in the house some during that time because you know i work from home and so um well we both work from home well i work from home permanently like full time and she works from home like most of the time and then like every so often like every couple of weeks or so what it's like every three weeks she has to go into the office but so we both mostly work from home i for uh full full work from home what was that it was just my brain trying to shut down while i'm mid-sentence i'm having a stroke over here um but yeah so we we still were like working in the house and whatever during the day right but then at night we would, uh, you know, because we don't want to sleep here because there could be other bats. We don't know. And so we don't want to sleep in a house with bats for the same reason I mentioned way before is that, you don't, you know, they could bite you and you wouldn't know and whatever. Um, but I made the decision after some talking, talking it over to get the, the vaccine. Now, we're coming back to the rabies thing, right? Why is it a big deal? It's because, again, you can get bit and not know it. And then... 
rabies i don't know most people i think don't really think about this they don't i think people have this idea that like oh rabies is like this is this bad disease thing but like you know uh, you're probably not gonna get it and well if you do you just go to the hospital wrong okay rabies has an effective 100 percent fatality I will repeat that again. It is effectively 100% fatal, as in basically about as good as you can get, you know, close as you can get to anything in this world as being a guarantee, okay? Now, you, if you get bit with, you know, you're exposed to rabies, the vaccine is very, very effective, okay? If you get treatment right away, you go through the whole vaccination process, which is kind of a process, okay? Not going to lie. It was, uh, I had to get butt ass naked at, at the emergency room to start this series. Right. And they gave me, I think if I'm remembering correctly, five shots, <laughs> it depends on the person, right? Different body weights. And obviously if you're, whether you're male or female, there's all sorts of things that enter into it. But, um, yeah, I ended up getting five shots. Uh, I think my wife got four. Let me think about it. Right. One in each quad. No, no, it wasn't one in each quad. It was just one of my quads. One in one quad, one in each arm, and one in each ass cheek. So yeah, five. Two, two for, you know, one for each arm, one for each ass cheek, and my quad. That's five. Yeah, I got five shots. Um, and some of, some of that's the vaccine, and other parts of it is like uh, immunoglobulin or something like that. I don't know. If you're a doctor, you're probably laughing at me right now. Um, some sort of blood product you need to get some sort of blood product of so i don't know if it's like just some sort of hemoglobin or what i don't know um th that's like part of what you have to get at first i guess it's somehow it's i don't know it's the way the vaccine works you need to get this product in your system this blood product before it'll like be effective or something or i don't know maybe it has to attach itself to it and to do something i don't know something something biochemistry i have no idea but that's part of the reason why there's so many that first time is because you have to get that stuff too. And then you have to get like some whatever varying dosages of vaccine itself or something. Maybe it's multiple parts. I don't fucking know. But I got five shots and it sucked. <laughs> it actually wasn't too bad. It just was the whole process of just being there for that long to get seen, right? Because emergency rooms are never like quick, you know, and then and then you get five shots. It's kind of like you have to get naked and your, your ass hurts for a while. You know, it's not fun, um, but it's it's not you know it's not the worst thing but that's just the first appointment then you have to follow up like a few more times right um so like the first shot the first shots plural you get are like that the day it's supposed to be like the day of or the day after or whatever it's like day zero or day one or whatever it's like as soon as possible like you know that's that's your that's we'll call it day one right because it's day one is like the day that you're starting it right and then you like I think day four or something. So it's like it was literally a few days later, we had to go back for another one. And then we had to go back on like day seven, I think. And then one more time a week later on day 14, something like that. It was like four times in total. The other times weren't at the emergency room. You just have to start at the emergency room and then you're able to go to an infusion center and that's where they give you the other ones. Um, yeah. Interesting experience, but you know, so to my mind, I don't, I have no idea why I think people just don't understand. So now I'm educating you. So now you, dear listener, now you understand. Um, it's stupid to be exposed to a bat, whether you think you were bit or not, because you wouldn't know, and not get a rabies vaccine. It's just kind of dumb. It really is. Like, right? I mean, I don't know. If you want to chance it, you can, right? Just, just keep in mind that if you get bit by a... A, a bat that's carrying rabies and you don't know it and you think ah eh, i don't think i got bit or eh, even if i did get bit like eh, it's probably not rabies like i'll probably be, f be fine right really the moment you make that decision to not get the vaccine you're essentially possibly right low chance probably won't happen but you are potentially signing your death warrant the reason being is because this whole remember I said it's a hundred percent fatal, you know, effectively. Um, I keep saying effective. It's because technically, like there have been people. I think maybe one or two people ever 
in the history of the world that have survived. Um, I think one of them, they theorized that like she had gotten like a micro dosage of it at first, right? She'd gotten bit like by, had a really low viral load to the point where like somehow it didn't end up affecting her. So then when she got the full dosage later and got, and fully got rabies, right? She had some sort of an immunity that like worked in her favor, um, I think. But here, we'll look it up real quick because I don't recall rabies uh survivors uh da, 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 da. as of 2016 so this is a little outdated but not too bad um oh, okay so it's more than it's more than i thought as of 2016 only 14 people were documented to have survived a rabies infection after showing symptoms um so that I mean, anyway, that's why they say virtually or effectively 100% because it's not exact math 100%, but it's like of all the people that get rabies, right? It's like the, it's it may as well be, right? It's like if you have a if something is 99.9997% fatal, is there really a reason to be like, well, it's not 100, it's only 99.9997. It's like you can't get any closer to a hundred, right? Like it's just not useful to say 99.9997%. It's like, okay, yeah, round it up at that point. It's basically a hundred percent, right? It's pretty much a guarantee. Like there's at this point you're talking about, like there's been like thousands and thousands or whatever of people that have had rabies and been infected or whatever. And then like a few people look, okay, we'll say of, as of 2016, apparently only 14 people, um, were infected and showed symptoms and survived. Everyone else died. All of the other people died. How many people is that? Um, I don't know. Let's let's look into this. Um, the Wikipedia page is that gonna give us kind of some summary stuff down here somewhere? Um, rabies. I'll just do rabies fatality rate. WHO. Here we go. Good old who. They got some information, of course. Key facts. Rabies is a vaccine preventable viral disease, which occurs in more than 150 countries and territories. And uh, it causes tens of thousands of deaths every year, mainly in Asia and Africa, 40% of whom are children under 15 years of age. Well, now I wonder why that is, right? There might be more bats there. They might not a lot of them might be getting bit not really even realizing they're got bit right and then even if they do get bit maybe they don't have the means to um you know they don't have a lot of vaccinations like available there they like the vaccines just not prevalent over there for some you know who knows um but so dog oh yeah i forgot about it yeah oh yeah dogs that's the it's wild dogs dogs are the main source of human rabies uh deaths contributing up to 99 percent of all rabies transmissions to humans Rabies can be prevented through vaccination of dogs and prevention of dog bites. Now, um, I think it's really prevalent in a lot of like wild dogs or whatever. So it's it, bats. It's a lot less prevalent, um, but it's kind of like a sneaky sort of danger, right? Because again, you might not know you're a bit. You might even not even know a bat was nearby, right? I think there was this one girl who got bit and died. They were camping. And so they're just outside camping, right? They're camping and then, I don't know, a bit, a bat, a bit, a bit bat her in the night. A bat bit her in the night, you know, flew down or crawled over or whatever. It bit her and she just had no idea. Got rabies, died. Um, after a potential exposure of people to a rabid animal, they can seek post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP, which consists of immediate thorough wound washing with soap and water for 15 minutes series of rabies vaccinations and if indicated administration of rabies immunoglobulin that's what i was talking about before or monoclonal antibodies which can be life-saving globally rabies cause an estimate causes an estimated cost of 8.6 billion per year blah 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 okay this is less interesting now um yeah here we go so Rabies is a vaccine-preventable zoonotic viral disease affecting the central nervous system. Once clinical symptoms appear, now remember, this is the WHO, okay? This is the World Health Organization's website, so it's fairly credible. <laughs> uh, once clinical symptoms appear, rabies is virtually 100% fatal. In up to 99% of cases, domestic dogs are responsible for rabies virus transmission to humans, yet rabies can affect both domestic and wild animals. It spreads to people 
and animals via saliva, usually through bites, scratches, or in, or direct contact with mucosa, e.g. eyes, mouth, or open wounds. Ugh. That's really fun to think about. Um, La-di-da-di-da. I'm just kind of curious if they have, like, some more of the real numbers diving into some of this stuff. Like, how many people? No, it doesn't look like I do. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to find this, man. I, or not we might i might just get bored in two seconds and be like yeah this is i'm not gonna do this uh, bum, 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 bum. well on the wikipedia it does have one number and that's 59 59 percent 59,000 per year worldwide are the deaths 59,000 across the whole world per year um Mm. U.S. records five rabies deaths in 2021, highest number in a decade. Just FYI. Um, including that of a seven-year-old child involved direct contact with bats and occurred over a five-week period starting in late September. Deaths occurred in Idaho, Illinois, and Texas, and all three people experienced symptoms three to seven weeks after contact with bats. They died two to three weeks after symptoms began, according to a CDC report. So, yeah, man, it's not many people. It's not, it's, it's, if you, you know, if you have a bat, um, and you, you know, you, you, you're just rolling the dice, man. But, but the bottom line is if you show symptoms, that's essentially, if you talk to any medical professional, and this is the only person who wasn't insane who I talked to who was like, just gave me information, was super objective about everything. I talked to a state like health official over the phone and she agreed with my, you know, my, my, uh, leaning towards like just getting the vaccine and, you know, cause she, you know, she was not forcing me or pressuring me into anything. She's just giving me information. Like, here's your choices. Here's what information we have. And one thing she mentioned on the phone call. And I think this is the thing that any health professional probably does or should do is always just be mentioning like, look, just, just so you're aware. Cause I think a lot of people probably aren't aware. So they should be made aware, right? Once symptoms set in rabies is effectively 100% fatal. It's, you know, so it's like, you're just, like I said, you might be signing your death warrant. Cause you, cause once you decide you're like, I'm not going to get the shot, you're not going to change your mind until when, right? When would be the point that you might change your mind? You start feeling ill, you get flu like symptoms. You're like, Oh, you know what? Maybe I should get that vaccine. Guess what? Too late, motherfucker. Because once symptoms set in, that's basically when the 100% effective fatality rate is is applied, right? That's when that's when it's like far too late, right? If you get if you get treatment before there's any symptoms, there's always the chance that you can get through it, right? The, the, that that vaccine could save your life. Um especially it's it almost guaranteed will for sure be effective and save your life if you get it right away right if you right after the exposure you just go you get the vaccine um but yeah you won't know until much later right you might not even think of it you might not even connect the dots um it can it can actually be in your system i think for months i think up to this is now this is probably not typical but i have heard of through my research apparently it can actually be dormant for like up to a year sometimes you can literally just be for months and months. You can have this stuff in your sim or pff, in your symptoms in your system and not have any clue. And then you just start getting ill one day and you, you feel sick, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it sounds like it's from what I've heard, it's a really painful, torturous death too. So it's not fun. Um, oh yeah, here's the little, I have the New York times article about the, the uptick in rabies deaths in the U S I have it in front of me right now, and here, right there, it says, once the virus reaches the brain, it can cause convulsions, fear of water, excessive salivation, and other symptoms. Eventually, the infection causes coma and death. Once symptoms start, rabies is nearly always fatal. So, yeah, dude, that's my advice. Don't mess around. Do what I did. Get the vaccine right away. Just don't fuck around with it. Because it's so dumb, right? It's just such a dumb, just like a lot of other vaccines, to be honest. It's such a dumb thing to not do it, right? There's almost never a reason. Now, there are, are there going to be cases where, not with rabies, because rabies is 100% fatal once you get symptoms. So, um, 
you're going to roll the dice regardless with that one on, in getting the vaccine, right? Like that's just, it's just a no brainer. Um, I, I mean, that's assuming like for, I guess I'm saying like, no matter what you would get it and take the, ch- take your chances with whatever, I don't know, like allergic reaction you could have or whatever. If you know, you got bit by a rabbit animal, right? Like if you don't know, you even got bit or you don't know there's a rabbit, right? That could be another conversation entirely of like risk and reward. If you are a person that has like, a bad react, potentially like really bad reactions in store for you getting that vaccine or something. Right. But most people can get most vaccines, right? There's very few people that can't get vaccine. A lot of vaccines are very safe for m- almost everybody. Right. Um, yeah, it's just, look, I'm pro vaccine. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get too political, but when the COVID vaccine came out, um, I was like jumping on getting on that list ASAP. I'm like, where can I sign up? Let me get this shot immediately. Cause I want to go back outside and see people again and not have to worry about this thing. Right. Not just for myself, but I don't want to spread it around as much, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just better to just do that. Right. Just sign me the fuck up. And that's, yeah, that's the smart thing to do. Um, you know, it's just, it's just dumb to not, it just, you talk to your doctors, right? You talk to doctors and if they tell you it's safe, for you to get a certain given vaccine, right? Just fucking do the vaccine. Um, the rabies one is so dumb to not do. It's like, okay, yeah, is it going to be a little bit expensive? Probably. I haven't got my bill yet for all those shots. I'm sure that insurance didn't cover everything, right? It'd be nice to think that they did, but they probably didn't. Um, but it's so dumb. It's like you, you don't get it, and then if the chance strikes right if if you happen to just roll the wrong number right your number comes up and you have a, a you have whatever animal if we're talking bad or whatever you were exposed to bad is the main thing right because like again if a rabid dog bites you it's gonna be pretty obvious right um i think it, anyone's gonna get those shots in that case i would think right the the case of being exposed to a bat a lot of people a shocking number of people forgo that kind of stuff they just say like yeah that's fine this probably didn't have rabies it probably didn't even bite me i don't think it bit me yeah i don't i I looked i didn't see a mark yeah okay have fun with that dude because if your number comes up you're guaranteed basically to die so i guess if you don't value your life very much then you know whatever if you're just dumb okay but i'm here to tell you that's a dumb thing to do if you like living um and you're exposed to a, a bat or any other animal that uh, carries rabies. Um, if, there, if there's any chance you got exposed to rabies that you've been infected, uh, you should for sure get the vaccine. It's a no-brainer. It's it's literally a choice of life and death. I mean, at, at a certain point, right? So, yeah, get the fucking vaccine. If you if you're exposed to rabies, don't don't just go out for fun and be like, man, I want to get some of that rabies vaccine. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> like is not um but but if you need it you should definitely get it so that was fun you know it was a fun time um what else has been going on with me uh still been doing stand-up obviously i didn't take a break from that this whole time um i i'm you know i'm, I'm on that grind till i die dude i i love stand-up um it was actually really cool just recently we had um at one of my local hometown well, literally my hometown club, I get, well, because, well, it's not my hometown, like, I didn't grow up here, um, but my, the town I live in, Cedar Rapids, um, the Lucky Cat, one of my main clubs that I go to for open mics, and I've done shows at, they scored Sam Talent came through, um, and if you don't know who Sam Talent is, um, like I admittedly, until a little more recently, didn't know, right, um, there's, dude, there's so many comedians out there, it's, it's understandable, but, you should you should check him out if you haven't. He's super funny. Um, saw him in live and in person, killed, destroyed the place. He was so funny, dude. Um, and it, yeah, and if, if you're if you're someone who who go who goes by credits, it's like I don't know what has he done. Oh, I don't know. Uh, he was just recently in the last week or so uh, on the Joe Rogan Experience. So <laughs> yeah, he's doing pretty well for himself. Okay, go see him. He's hilarious. If you get the chance, go see him. But yeah, it's 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 super cool um, that this newer club in my town is starting to get um, enough traction, enough word of mouth, whatever. It's it's getting enough of a reputation now 
that we were able to book. I like how I say we, like I'm part of the, I, I, that's all Haley. I don't, I don't own the club. Uh, shout out to Haley. Uh, we're going to have Haley on the podcast at some point. I talked to her about it a, a long while back and I just never followed up to like set up a date, but we're going to have Haley, uh, Haley Flanker, Flanker. Is that the right way to say? I don't know how to say your last name, Haley. But yeah, we'll have Haley on the podcast. The the um, she owns the Lucky Cat. But yeah, it's super cool that that she uh, managed to score Sam Talent. That was that was such an awesome thing because it's a you know it's like if 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 this continues to go in that direction and this club gets bigger and bigger names more and more often, that's just more opportunities for people like me to potentially do well enough to get the the opportunity to like host or something on a weekend show with someone like a Sam talent or whoever. Right. So that's, that's amazing. Cause that's, I mean, that really like, that's, that's the way you grow as a comedian. Like as far as like the fast track sort of way to grow is you, you surround yourself with comedians that are so much better than you that are, that are unfathomably funnier than you. Um, it really is like a, I I've, I've told this story to people a bunch before, um, well, it's not really more a story. It's more of just like an example of a point that I'm making, but because um, there's not much to the story. Um, but you know, I really, I genuinely believe that the people you surround yourself with can really make or break you in success in a lot of things. And comedy is no different. Um, an example of this is in skateboarding. Uh, one of my favorite skateboarders of all time, Paul Rodriguez, um, actually <laughs> ties to this pretty interestingly because I, uh, Ironically enough, Paul Rodriguez is the name of a stand-up comedian and actor. And the one I'm talking about, the skateboarder, is actually his son, Paul Rodriguez Jr. So there's the comedian, Paul Rodriguez, and then his son, Paul Rodriguez Jr., simply known as Paul Rodriguez or P-Rod, uh, is a skateboarder, a longtime skateboarder. Um, and back in the day, early 2000s or so, he was young and he was on top of the world good. He was so good. Um still is really good obviously but um just i don't know how much he's in like the competitive scene or anything anymore he might be kind of retired from that kind of stuff but obviously he still skates you can still find clips of him online now um just shredding just killing it like always but uh anyway he went pro when he was very young like i don't know 16 17 probably or something like that um maybe earlier i he was only like 18 or 19 when they when he was on uh, girl yeah right it's a really good skate video and that he was already pro then and that part was killer so i don't i don't remember we have the internet i'm at, sitting at my computer again let's just look it up paul woo typing with one hand is super fun paul rodriguez see right there the first two hits right the first hit that it suggests as i'm typing into google search bar is paul rodriguez it says mexican american actor and then right below it, it says Paul Rodriguez, American skateboarder. That is father and son right there. Um, oh, shit. I cl- and I clicked on the wrong one on accident after I completed the search. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, yeah, also known by his nickname, P-Rod. 1984. Damn, he's 38 now. Damn, he's almost 40. That's crazy. But yeah, he he well it says years active, nineteen ninety five to present. Um, but as far as like when he went pro, I don't know when that would have been. Um, hmm. Or maybe it is saying that he went pro in ninety five. I don't think that's true though. Oh, there it says turned pro two thousand two. Oh damn! So it was like the year after. So he turned pro, and then one year later, uh, filmed his part and yeah right yeah incredible dude anyway um but yeah he he has like a few friends that like also went pro right and it's like oh whoa what a weird coincidence yeah it's not a coincidence dude like that's that's what happens like you can see examples of that all over the place um when people do really well they go pro at something and they become great they the people that are around them also tend to be the at least the ones that are in you know partaking in that thing right <laughs> if they're if they're if there's a skateboarder that goes pro and they're really good 
and the people they're around, some of them don't skateboard, right? I'm not talking about those people. I'm just talking about the people that are also doing that same thing with him, right? They're skating with him. They're like hanging out. They're seshing the same rail at the, together and whatever. Um, you'll see this happen often. That they'll it, this happens in like uh, other sports too, like basketball, right? It's common to see like a, a person who goes pro. And then, like, they have a brother who also goes pro. Well, guess what? Guess who was playing one-on-one all the time with this other pro guy? Uh, His brother, right? Playing against him and stuff and playing with him. And so that kind of exposure to greatness, it rubs off on you, dude. You you pick up. I mean, humans are very, we're like sponges. We take in all this just data, this, 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 like, stimuli around us. And um, it shapes us. It makes us who we are to some degree. Um. So yeah, yeah. The it, the the possible benefit to a a newbie one year in comic like me to be around a lot more regularly, big name comics that are unfathomably funnier than me. Right, they're so much better than me. Um, it's amazing to think that I could have those opportunities. Um, I'm excited, and and also I'm just excited for the club, and I'm excited for Haley. I'm really I'm really happy for her. Um, she's such a cool person. Um, I don't even know, man, I almost, I felt myself almost get a little emotional just talking about it. Uh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so incredibly grateful. I'm so lucky to have a club like the lucky cat in the town I live in. I mean, unreal. Um, there's a lot of bad clubs out there. I don't know about them cause I'm the lucky one who has this awesome home club right here. That's so good. Um, but I, I know from hearing through the grapevine, right, there's a lot of trashy clubs around the country that uh, where you don't get as much time on stage to for the open mic, where you um, have shitty owners that don't care about comedy at all. They just care about making a buck, which, I mean, obviously it's a business, right? You got to care about making a buck. At the end of the day, that's, it, that's what it's about because you can't maintain it without doing that. But there's a difference between someone who wants to just make a buck off of the back of comedians um, to sell more drinks and make money, right? Versus someone like Haley, who um, is actually really passionate about comedy and and comedians, and and really care. She really cares about like nurturing our growth. Um, I see it over and over again, and I've had the experience of like being able to get booked on shows um, and given oppor- just given opportunities that, quite frankly, someone at my level doesn't even necessarily deserve. You know, it's like as far as like, I haven't proven anything crazy good yet. You know, I've, I haven't shown myself to be like, I'm not like a savant, right? I'm just a, a regular guy that's just trying to do comedy and trying to get better. Um, but she notices that and she, she taps you on the shoulder. She gives you opportunities and she runs that place really well. Um, it's just, it's, it's a, it feels like a real room when you go and you do an open mic at the lucky cat. It feels like a show a lot of times. Cause like the audience is like, I don't know. She just cultivates this environment that people that are there are there to see comedy and they want to be there they come in and even even with the open mic where it's it's free right it's like you don't pay to get in um it feels like a paid show because of how the audience is a lot of times and it's it makes a big difference i have two clubs that i go to every week that and joystick Iowa city and, and it's not a dig against joystick um this is the first place i went up and and i'll always have there always be a, a place in my heart or whatever cheesy <laughs> bullshit um for for the place you know and i and have some um, some friends there that i respect and i like um but but joystick is is a very it's a it's a dingy dark dungeon of a bar it's a bar right and it's it doesn't feel like a comedy club so much as it's just a bar where, where there's a stage and comedy does take place there. Right. So, um, and there, and there's been some great shows at joystick, right. But the open mic at joystick is oftentimes, uh, it's just some drunk kids, you know, um, I say kids cause I'm 33. They're, they're 21 and up. I'm not, <laughs> they're not, they're not underage or anything. I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah. You know, college students and, um, they don't always pay attention. They don't always care about the comedy that's going on. They're just there to get drunk and whatever. And they don't have to care about the comedy necessarily. You know, I'm just not, I'm not putting that on them. Um, but it's not, you know, that, that environment is very different. And so you can try stuff at joystick and, and it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. It's a hit and miss. It's, it's all over the place. 
But then you go to Lucky Cat and it's you can trust that what's happening at Lucky Cat is more real. Like you can trust that the reaction you get good or bad at Lucky Cat is probably what that bit actually deserves, right? If if you get a if you get a big laugh on something at Lucky Cat, you probably did something right and you probably have something there. And if you bomb and everyone's just staring at you like you're crazy, it probably deserved to bomb and it was probably bad, right? Either the joke is bad or the joke was done poorly in that moment or, you know, whatever the million reasons it can be because comedy's hard and it's complicated. Um, but yeah, again, I'm, I'm just so, so grateful to, to have that as my like home club to go to every week uh, for the open mic. And sometimes more often when I get booked on shows, sometimes um, it's super cool. So shout out to Haley. You are awesome. Keep, keep doing what you do keep supporting us um we're going to support you as much as we can as well uh we you know mutual success we want we want each other to succeed genuinely and it's really cool to have that that type of a relationship where everyone in the group you know all the comedians and, and Haley included everyone wants each other to succeed we're all supporting each other and it's that's that's an incredible uh privilege so i, I don't take it lightly um, but yeah, we're going to have Haley on at some point, uh, whenever I stop being lazy and make it get, get it scheduled, get it figured out. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's maybe a good place to end it. That's a nice, that's a nice, fun, light, uh, heartfelt, good feeling. There's a warm fuzzy. We can end on a warm fuzzy today. So, um, I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm not planning on taking a bunch of weeks off again. I, uh, you know, this will come out. This is a Monday right now. I'm recording it, um, during the day. Cause I'm on PTO right now and, um, it'll be out for tomorrow morning and we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll be back. We'll be back. All right. You'll, you'll see us next week as well. Us. I don't know why I said us. You should see us next week. Me, myself and I, and other people that are also me. I don't really know. All right. Um, have a good day y'all. Peace.